Welcome to the Aftermarket Report with Vegas and Jim, Sunday's edition, which is usually a little bit longer. we got eight tickers we're going to talk about. I have the website up on the view screen right now, and if you would like, please sign up to our Twitter account. And also ring that bell and subscribe to our YouTube channel. And this is Miss Vegas. Hello. Well, first of all, good morning to everyone, and I would love to wish a, a wonderful Mother's Day to all the mothers out there, the stepmothers, foster mothers, and mothers that own pets like me, because I have a dog named Gucci, so I'm a dog mom. So happy Mother's Day to just everyone out there. Enjoy your special day, and I hope you're doing something special, even just for yourself. Even if that means you're doing nothing today, that's fine. You deserve the day off. So happy Mother's Day, ladies. So let's get started. So I have quite the list today because, you know, Sundays we give a longer list. And so I have a mixture of different stocks and a couple option ideas, uh, which, of course, is to help the smaller accounts. OK, so let's get started. We're going to talk about CFMS, Mara, VFF, Teleria, McDonald's, Roku, Jean and AVP. So where are we going here? We're going to start with CFMS. M S has anyone even heard of this company? Well, of course you have, cause we've actually talked about Conformis before and uh, Conformis had a beautiful run. I mean, they're first of all into medical instruments and supplies, as you guys all know, cause I've talked about Remember, they're the company uh, that they do the knee replacements. If you have to get a new replacement. I mean, I, I mean, if you look at the website, it's really interesting. I mean, I wouldn't want that in my knee, but <laughs> I mean, people that have to get a knee replacement, I guess this is a special customized. Um, Anyhow, so CFMS Conformance, the reason I bring this chart to your attention is because it's had a new 52 week and it had a beautiful move. I mean, if you look at this chart, the weekly chart, it is also what I want to mention, very important. You guys know I talk about this a lot. It formed a pocket pivot on Friday. It has not done that in some time. It was overbought and the Bollinger Bands were widening up and it kept going higher over the last couple of days and making 52 week highs, but it finally made a pocket pivot on Friday. So that's important because to me, that's a footprint for the next move higher potentially on the stock. So I'm gonna turn it over to Jim, who's gonna talk to us all about supports and resistance so that we know where we can probably look to get in or look to get out. Jim, over to you. Oh, yeah. I've been had this stock on watch for at least two years. This is my third year that I've had this trade on watch. I'm going to post up the chart. I erased all my trend lines I had on here, so I'm kind of beginning new, and I just drew these in. We had a $0.36 cent low just the end of last year, and here in five months, we've ran from $0.36 cents all the way up to 384 with a yearly high at 384 I'm going to post up just a three-year chart to see if we need to beat anything, and it looks like we still have some room to travel. I love traveling. We got a resistance here at 411, and pretty solid hard resistance, and I see another one right here at 445. I'm going to adjust that just a little bit. Right here, well, they got another one right here at 5-something, five 509, and you got that 470 three which is right there on that average and then you got this one here at 440 so we're going to bring this back up put it up on the 20 day look at the 20 day how beautiful run we had down here at this low support right at 266 i got two new averages that i'm going to be using as a case study this week for the room that's going to be the 50 and also the 200 ema and i'm going to try to see how i can find the right uh, time frames to work these in but right now we're bouncing off that 50 or excuse me off yeah off that 50 right up to about oh I'd say that 50 lands right there at 323 and we did have a double top breakout here Wednesday and Thursday and then Friday we broke out of that it did pull back to support level here at 320 so it matches up against that 50. We're going to keep an eye on that 50 and see if it pulls back to it. If not, your first support is going to be right here at 346. 
Your second support is going to be at 356, and we did close at 380. Uh, we didn't. We closed at 369. That's where we are after hours at 369. So the resistance we do have to break is going to be that 384. And I'm going to pull up that year's chart again to see if we can see the next resistance that we got to get to after we break that 383, 384 area. It's going to be that 411. And keep a good eye on this chart. I've had it on for two and a half years, and that's CFMS. Next one we're going to talk about is going to be related to the coin run, and that's Mara. Yeah, so I want to talk about Mara, and I want to also about Bitcoin very briefly. So Mara is a company located out in Las Vegas. And, you know, Mara had uh, just uh, on Friday and uh, they did talk about the revenue. You know, their revenues are a bit of a loss, um, you know, and also because of Bitcoin, because, you know, Mara is involved in the mining operations uh, of Bitcoin. And the company had approximately $2 million of cash and cash equivalents as of March 31st is what they did report in their um, uh, earnings. Uh, so what I do want to mention, though, here about Bitcoin, and then Jim's going to talk about the Mara chart. So, you know, Bitcoin has been catching everyone's attention because the rally hasn't really stopped. Every day we notice it's actually been reaching new highs. There was a tweet from Peter Brandt, who's an old school trader. He mentioned, you know, is, is this speculation on Bitcoin a lift off or a blow off and he was explaining that you know the parabolic advancement back in 2013 the market went into a correction phase between 2013 and 15 and then it had another parabolic move which peaked in December 2017 if you guys remember back then like Bitcoin went really crazy back then and then the two parabolic moves in the same market he had mentioned was really unheard of and he says the price of Bitcoin I'm quoting what he said, doesn't mean it's happening. He says the prices of Bitcoin eventually can reach maybe $50,000 mark if there's another parabolic move is what he claims. He says that he does predict that another, he did predict that another parabolic move would be magnificent and that the current rally, which has just begun, seems magnificent enough. It's actually left everyone kind of dumbstruck, especially the short sellers um also there's another trader out there who's known he said that um he does see potentially a parabolic move going on in bitcoin so you know what we have to keep a watch on bitcoin plays we don't know where it's going um you know we just have to wait and see i mean every day is a new day and uh, we just trade what the charts and price action show us so if we go to the mara chart which is what i'm looking at um I noticed Mara was popping on scanners as well. And obviously that's because that's common because obviously Bitcoin's heating up. And what I liked about Mara is that it did have support at the 50 and at the 200. And I really like it, especially when it gets to the 200, because I just like the fact that it's a stronger chart. But you know what, Jim? It also had a pocket pivot. Yep. So let's talk about that Mara chart and I'll turn it over right to you. Okay, here's the Mara years chart, and that's again, I'm going to show these two new moving averages that I'll be studying this week, the 50 and the 200. We did bounce off that 50 EMA there at 269. It kind of held pretty long for two weeks strong. And then the, the 200 EMA is up here at 326. So I'm going to go ahead, and, and we did have a yearly high with a double top here right around 632. And we have a pivot point, I'd say, in this trade, which is going to be right around this 338 area. And that's for Mara. So that's going to be our target long. It's going to be that 341, 338, somewhere in that area. And if we can break that resistance, which is now going to be the early pivot point, we can go up to new channels and new highs. But we do see that 200 at 326. So I'm going to pull ahead and put a trend line right there at 327. We're going to go ahead and pull this up to the 20 day now. You can see where they pretty much lined up. We do have another resistance up here at 356. And we have another one right here, right around the 310 area. And then the support level, which is right down here at the 277. And that's below that on the on the 20 day for one hour chart. We did have a have a uh, have a an alert on the 200 to move up and we did hit that 200 and that's going to be right here right around the two well, well I'm going to put that 
kind of hard to find, but I'm going to go ahead and put it right here at the 294 area. I think that's a pretty good equilibrium in between the way them candlesticks are lying. So this is going to be our pullback support. It's going to be at 277. We do have a, a first support here at 285 with a break of resistance at 294 on up to 311. 326 and 341 are going to, and then you got that final high on the 20 day at 356. And I'm just going to pull up the three minute one day and see if everything lines up. And I'm going to put another little, we had, did have a day high up here on this trade right around the 298. But I'm going to put that 297 as a far break resistance on it too. So that'll be your second resist, first resistance that we got to break after we break the 294. So no lower than 277 with your second support here at 385. We're right in the first support area right now. We do have a have a I do have a uh, yes buy on it as it goes up right here at the 291, and we got to break that resistance of 297 to bring her up to the other resistances, and that's going to be Mara. And I'm going to pull this 20-day chart so you can go ahead. Feel free to copy and paste this chart. Use these trend lines as resistances that I called out. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be VFF, Village Farms. Yeah, so you know what, Village Farms, I mean, they also, the CEO, Michael DeGilio, uh, he also disclosed earnings uh, on Friday. So much earnings happening, guys. And I'm liking to see when there's earnings movers going on. Uh, but he did have earnings uh, that they did mention. Uh, they had a profitability with net income increasing substantially to $8.6 million from, guess what, 5.5. Um, their pure pure Sun Farm sales in Canadian dollars tripled to $14.4 million, or equivalent to $10.8 million U.S. Uh, so that's really good. They have a meaningful up 48% from the fourth quarter. So you know what? This is looking really good, and this looks to me on the VFF farms, if you look at it. Uh, first of all, they have a really cool website. If you love cooking, you gotta go to the website. There's so many recipes, it's just amazing. Um, but you can definitely see, um, they have so many farmers out here. They have the greenhouse grown vegetables. So these allow natural sugars to develop into the produce. And um, this is really interesting. If you love to cook, you gotta go there. Um, so anyways, going back to this chart on VFF, I like it because, again, it's gapped up. Earnings is done. Uh, another pocket pivot. So this, to me, is bullish for a swing trade idea. Um, you know, could have some, mo you know, momentum, but it's going to take some time on the stock. Uh, I'll let Jim talk about the chart and price targets, potentially. Um, I'd like to see maybe this go to about 15 uh, but you know what? Let's hear what Jim has to say about this chart on Village Farms. We've had a very nice run on this on this chart, about two dollars and twenty cents here in two days. And I do like the channel we're in. We do have a ten forty low support on this here trade right now, and on the twenty day chart with a resistance breakout that we need to do at ten twelve eighty five, with a twenty day high at thirteen seventy six. And I'm going to put a little trend line right here at 1330, and then we got to break the resistance at 1356 on 20-day chart. But we're in a rectangular channel right now, which is very positive. The pullbacks, this could be a stock that you don't want to rush into, but maybe get in on the pullback and then take it for a ride. The volume bars are, are iffy, iffy, but yet it still bounces up on the low support of that 1040. So let's pull up the the yearly chart and take a real good look at it you see we did have a year high up here at eighteen dollars with a resistance high of seventeen forty six right now we're where we did hold support off that 50 ema which is at eleven seventy two and my low support right down here was at ten forty now that's a low low support i mean that's real low so you want to try to get in this trade maybe right around the, the eleven seventy eight eleven eighty area and I'm going to write that down so I can remember that. 1180 is going to be your solid support on this trade right now. So let's pull up the daily three minute. I always take a good look at how the run ran. I mean, you had a real nice breakout in the morning. She ran up to 1051 and then pulled back 50 cents. 
So this is a trade that's got pretty good little spreads to it. And if it consolidates in an area, you can more or less consider it a support as it will bounce on up. We did have a resistance high up here at 1291 where it hit a 1091 high that day. So we did pull back to that support channel, which was a previous high that we had the breakout that morning at 1251, which created a good solid support, as you can see. And we did bounce up off that, and then we pulled right back to it, right into close. It held, and then it bounced up again back to that high of 1271 with a closing of 1261. So this is how I'm going to call it. This, these, this is how I'm going to call it. I'm going to say low support is going to be right around your 12 dollar area 1208 and that's going to be VFF and then you got your second one right here at 1241 or 1224 with the, the first support at 1251 and the resistance we got to break is going to be this channel right here between 1285 to 1291 I'm going to pull up I'm going to write that down yeah, I can see that later. And then we're going to have to break that resistance right here at the 20, which is going to be the 1330 and the 1356. And I really do like this rectangular pattern, which means you don't have to chase it. Let it come to you. Maybe pull back to that first support at 1208. If it hits that, that's going to be a very strong buy. And I'm going to repeat, strong buy. And the next one we're going to talk about is, and you're willing to go ahead and stop these videos at any time, Copy and paste these charts and use them as your own supports and resistance levels. And TLRA is next. Okay, well, you know what? I always talk about TLRA. You guys should know this company by now. This is the technology company that has lots of application software. And you can read all about them online. I am not going to repeat what they up there in the software business. And you know what? Software companies are hot. And Teleria is one to watch for. I have been talking about the stock since it was in the fives. And look where it is now. It, this keeps making new 52-week highs, another pocket pivot. I mean, this is an earnings mover as well. I want to just briefly talk about the earnings on this particular stock. Um, the revenues increased 42% um, year over year to $13.6 million. It was really driven by their CTV growth of 169%. Uh, their gross profit was up 30%. Um, you know, this is just phenomenal, phenomenal growth with Telleria. And uh, they also have expanded uh, their leadership by hiring Paige Billens, who's their chief product officer. So we will see a lot of action, I think, more from this company. Um, that Don't forget they're into video advertising. And uh, they have all kinds of analytics that help. Uh, to, you know, direct monetization tools for companies that are, uh, you know, trying to promote their products out there. So this obviously is a service that people need. Companies need companies like this to help them promote their branding. So no surprise on the uh, earnings here on Telleria. And that is phenomenal. Imagine that growth. 9%. That's amazing. And the revenue is 42% year over year. That is just incredible. So great job to the management at Telleria. And you know what? This is one for you swing traders out there that like a swing trade. This is a good one, again, to add to your list for swing trading. And I'm going to let Jim talk about the chart. What can we see next on Telleria? Yeah, Telleria, beautiful, beautiful little run on this. And we've talked about this one for a long, for a while now. I'm going to pull up the yearly's chart. And first thing I want to note to everybody, people make fun. Some, I mean, there's very few, but there is a few conceited traders out there that make fun of my little trend lines that I put on here. Well, these trend lines just don't come in one. They come in as run goes up and as run pulls back. And I'm trying to get in in and out of these trades as best as I can. And also sometimes I'm swinging them in, 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 the, in the same case. But we did have a nice little channel that revs all the way up here for the last three months. And that trend line you can see is pretty evident as it goes up here from from this low support down here that we had to break the double top down here at 453. So this is a year's chart and I don't want to erase these right now because I just added some more new trend lines up here to the top but we've been watching this stock all the way down here when it was down here at 454 and we've almost got a hundred percent out of this trade already in three months 
And Miss Vegas and I, we've talked about this trade before on our market reports and also a lot in the room as it pops up on the scanner. We do run Trade Ideas Scanner throughout the day in our room. You're welcome to go ahead and join us for a two-week free trial and, and, and see how the room and see if you like the room. So I'm going to pull up the 20-day right now. We're going to look at the 20-day. We've had a real nice run off the 20-day and it's pulled back a couple of times. This one down here at 673 was a support at one time where it had that healthy little pullback from 672 all the way up to 725, which is a 60 cent scout. And then she's ran on up to break that resistance level here at 754. So that's where we're going to call our support level, our, our third support, right down here at the 754 area. The second support's going to be at 777, which is my lucky Vegas number. And also the 810 is going to be your first support. And we do have a lot of nice little patterns going on here in the last three days. We do have a trend line running up, and I'm going to draw that out right now. Just to show you how sometimes I draw these patterns up. You can see we've held that support level, and that lies right there at about 822. We're at 830, and you can see the little channel as it moves up. So I'm going to do another thing here. I'm going to run a parallel line all the way up on this trade from right here to right about here and then move it on up to this resistance level which I see maybe right there at 869 so that's going to be our next trend line that we got to break up for the pullback on this trend right here at the 822 level I'm going to pull up that year's chart one more time see if I can find me a resistance and that is a yearly high that we hit Friday at 850. So that's what we want to try to break for your first resistance would be that 850 high. I'm going to pull up a three year just to see if, and I don't think we've had anything on the three year on this at all. No, this has been a beautiful little run the past couple of weeks. So kind of expect it might be a little overbought. If it is, it'll pull back to support level. And I'm going to pull up the 20 day and that support level is at 754. Write that down on paper. TLRA no lower than 754 for your third support second at 777 810 and we got to break that 850 new high which we do have an ascending channel breakout it did fail a little bit after hours but I don't think that matters I think people will jump in this trade and try to break that resistance at 839 to take it to 850 up to that 670 area or 870 area excuse me and that's TLRA and the next one is my favorite place, McDonald's. I eat there once a year. Okay, so let's talk about McDonald's. I got to say if just a few things here. Um, I don't know if you guys know, but McDonald's, you know, made, you know, 20 years ago, they, they bought Boston Market. Did you know they own Boston Market? No. Um, and also, they bought uh, an Israeli um, artificial intelligence machine. And it's called Dynamic Yield. And it's a machine learning uh, product that helps to make McDonald's digital menu and mobile ordering interface smarter. So talk about investing. I told you, Israeli technology, strong out there, did, had no idea that McDonald's bought that company. Uh, so I want to talk about McDonald's because McDonald's has made a 52-week high. For those of you that go to McDonald's, you've seen those self-ordering kiosks and you can order your own food there and then you get your ticket you get a, a number and then you, they call out your number and you pick up your food at the counter what mcdonald's has noticed uh, mcdonald's has noticed is that um customers that go there to order at those kiosks inside the store or even mobile ordering they're noticing that customers are ordering more items than they would normally if they were ordering in person face to face with someone so they're actually learning through the machine learning, the technology. Um, they're basically collecting the data from the millions of customers like you that are uh, purchasing products. And they're looking to then make meal suggestions based on factors like the time of day, the weather. It's also helping them track um, what are you ordering? What are you buying? Uh, this technology is being used at 700 drive throughs eventually will be used across all of the chain's digital platforms. Uh, so McDonald's, we're noticing some new trends, as you can see, 
we have to see here mcdonald's has made a new 52 week high i cannot ignore this chart i was waiting for this to eventually get to 200 dollars. it has taken some time but let me tell you how i'm going to trade the stock so i'm not going to really buy the stock i'm going to buy the options um and so we do have some options currently in play just so you know we have the 200 dollars ones that expire May 17, which is this Friday. So we're gonna stick to those ones as well. Um, we're also gonna be looking at another option. Uh, I just wanna pull it up here because I somehow my computer froze here. Um, but I will be looking also at the what's interesting here where I saw a lot of open interest. So the $200 calls have a lot of open interest. But one of the other ones that has a lot of open interest, believe it or not, is the one for the 210 strike. Not to say it's going to go up 10 bucks, but you know what? As the stock starts to move, even a few dollars, maybe this week, um, that 10, 210 strike, uh, that option call is going to be worth more. Now, those option calls were very, very cheap on Friday. Looks like they were worth three cents, believe it or not. So for those of you that like to trade options, uh, you may want to look at the $200 calls. Those have the most volatility and open interest and same with the ones for the 210 now these ones expire may 17 um so those are the ones i'm focused on for tomorrow so be sure to check them out and as jim said you know what you're welcome to come to our room come check us out come there for two weeks i will tell you i've had people that came just for two weeks thinking that they're just going to check it out and now they fell in love and they've decided to actually sign up so it's not about joining a paid room you have to be in a room that you like, that you enjoy. You're, there's a lot of collaboration. There's no egos here. There's moderation on voice to help guide you on your trades. Various ideas to help small accounts. So it's important to be together trading with people that help you and want to see you do well. It's very easy to be in rooms that all they do all day is type messages, type messages. Like I said, to me, that would be boring even if I'm working full time and I can listen to the voice that helps capture my attention. I had two people message me last week and I'll actually show the messages to you guys on the next video, but I had two people say to me, I work full time and I listen to you guys during the day because I have a job. I don't have time to watch the screens and read the messages. And just from your verbal alerts that you give on voice and explain that there's a breakout or there, you know, news just came out or, there's a float rotation. I had one person say, just from listening to you on voice, I was able to trade a stock and I made a quick 300 bucks just from listening to voice. So imagine that alone, they made money. So that, they're, and they're not even a customer, they're on a trial. So that alone helped them. So there's a big difference between being in a room that's free where they don't really talk at all. I mean, they talk, but not all day. And why should they talk all day? They don't need to commit to talking all day. They're not a paid service. Paid service, there's value added for that service. You're paying for people's time, the mod's time, to be here to support you, to guide you, to answer your direct messages. So there is a lot of differences there. And to me, that alone is worth every penny out there. So enough of that. Um, so McDonald's, definitely looking at that. And Jim, can you tell us about the chart? All right, Jim, will tell you about the chart. All um, right. So we, we did have a, a high there at 204.60 on that last call that we called out a couple of weeks ago, and it has pulled back to low support, which is right at the bottom of this channel here at 193.50. We've had an upward trend, and we did break out of that trend Thursday and Friday, but also if you look at it, it kind of held that trend on that low that we had sell off at 195.71. So we did create a new high out of that trend and we got to break a resistance high of 298, which is right around 201. That could, you know, take give or take a penny with a resistance high of 204, $204, $204 $204 $204.60. So that's the high we got to break. And I'm going to pull up the year's chart and show what we're looking at on the year. And I'm pretty bullish on, I'm, I'm fairly bullish on this trade right now, especially when it pulls back like it did Thursday and Friday to that channel, to that support level which is right there at 197 13 16 cents and you can see we've had a low trend start right here at 173 all the way up to 20 200 that's about a 30 27 
trade here in the last three months. And we did break that resistance high that we had to break at 190. And that was very important that we did that. It did try to do it once. It did try to do it the second time, but on the third breakout, the triple top, it did break out of that and run all the way up and created that new high that I'm talking about at 204, um, 204.60. So let's pull up the 20-day. Them numbers are just numbers that I'm not used to saying a lot, you know, $200. So it's going to take me 28 times to repeat that habit, to create that, that habit. So here we are. We need to break a resistance of 201 Monday. If it pulls back, it'll pull back to support level. And I got a first support. I'm calling this a little pivot point area at the, at the 200. We do have, and it almost goes down in dollar increments. We have the 199 and we have the 198 for a low support. I hate, to, I don't want to see it go any lower than that. If it does, we'll create the bottom strong buy at 197.16. This is McDonald's. We got to break a resistance of the yearly high at 204.53. And the next one we're going to talk about is going to be Roku. Oh my goodness, Roku. Very bold. You know, I got to say, this company is just amazes me and I love it so much. Uh, you know, I love it for now because <laughs> it's just performing so well. So, first of all, you know, it's had a beautiful run. And, you know, this is what you call the calm before the storm, because you know what, with everything going on in the markets, um, you know, with different with all the chatter going on with the China deal, no deal, deal in the pipes, deal behind the scenes. I mean, some people are a little hesitant to invest in stocks or they're getting stopped out. So there's different things going on. But nevertheless, always trade chart and tape action. That's it. That's all you got to just cut out the noise. And one of the things we noticed here with um, Roku had a beautiful earnings report. And you know what? I got to tell you, this company has done amazing. You know, the stock went up 26% because of its earnings. And they delivered top-notch expectations. The, the shareholders were so happy with the earnings. They delivered a revenue of $207 million. Do you know that they're up 51% year over year? They actually surpassed guidance and analyst expectations. This is remarkable because this company, you know, people think it's been the softest quarter in terms of revenue growth. Well, you know what? This is uh, phenomenal results. And they also talked about how they're going to achieve, um, how this is just getting started, the results of what we're seeing. So first of all, their operating system is getting market share. They are uh, apparently more than 33% of smart TVs that are sold in the U.S. were Roku TVs. Did you know that? And this was mentioned by the founder, Anthony Wood. And he said that the Roku operating system, which is called the OS, is the number one selling smart TV operating system in the country. Um, also, they've taken out the guesswork of uh, connecting your TV, making streaming very easy for you. So, you know, a lot of people are not technically inclined. Like, honestly, my mom, she's so not technically inclined. So, you know what? If we could get a Roku TV here, I think she'd be so much happier with it. And, she, you know, they're basically expanding the footprint to make it the leader of smart TVs. Um, the other thing, too, is uh, people are finding that there's more, more people getting Roku for their home. So, you know, sales are increasing, margins continue to improve, um, which also, don't forget, Roku makes money from advertising as well. So don't forget, people are viewing ads on them, about them, and they're making money from that. So that alone is poised for Roku to just have some sort of continuation. I will not be shocked, and believe me, you can quote me on this, don't be shocked that this year, I don't know what month, but it'll be this year, maybe in the next couple months, maybe by the time they report again, this stock's going to be $100 plus this stock. So if you like to do long-term investing, I'm not recommending this. I'm just saying you may want to check it out. Do your own due diligence. Speak to your financial advisor because we know we're not licensed advisors at all. But I'm just saying from what I'm seeing, from what I'm reading, I'm just giving you my personal opinion. This stock, just the way that it's going, I'm not going to be shocked when I see this over 100 bucks. So Roku, 
options are in play, uh, definitely for the $90 strike and the $85 strike. The other thing I do want to mention about Roku is that the stock's been shorted and now they have to cover. So if you guys go to the website, shortsqueeze.com, you're going to see that Roku has less than one day to cover and those shorts are going to be paying for this. So I believe Roku is going to have a big short squeeze. I did see it on shop, you know, the stock Shopify. It happened on Shopify where shorts got, sh we're shorting the stock. And you know what? It ripped $10 a couple days later and those shorts had to cover big time. So you know what? I won't be shocked to see some sort of short squeeze on Roku coming your way. Oh, that is my specialty. I love barbecues. And let's just see what happens tomorrow with Roku. I mean, you know, again, will, remains to be seen. Uh, the stock closed at 82.75. Let's see where it opens up tomorrow. And let's see where we close uh, in the next couple of days. So, Jim, over to you. Yeah, I'm going to be watching that option there at $85 because I called that 85 a while back. And I said, we're going to eventually hit that 85. And that's what we did Friday. We actually hit 86.50. So if this thing decides to pull back any, and I see the interest right now at the $85 level on the May 17th, I'm going to keep a good eye on this whole little section, right? I'm going to try to keep it in the money, you know, all the way to 95 right now, I mean to 87 and right that now it's at 95 cents. So if this thing pulls back too, I might be looking at that $87 option. It does have a little interest in it. So let's look at the chart. I'm going to pull up the yearly with my other moving averages on it. Whoa, there we go. This is a beautiful run last week. It ran all the way back here from $65 all the way up to $86. If you do the math, that's a $21 bounce, almost $20 bounce in three days on this trade. So that, that's a beautiful little run. I'm going to put a low support here at $71.25. I need to change this over. Right there, right there, right around the twenty to seventy-one twelve area. And I think that's going to be a low support on it, real low. If it decides to pull back, but I don't know. I think they tried to short this Friday, like Miss Vegas said, and then it went ahead and turned around, bounced back up, almost to where resistance was at eighty-three thirty-six. But I did call an eighty-five dollar target on this when it was way back here at fifty-five. And you can see what happened right around the 20-day period. It bounced all the way up there and hit that. And that's a $30, $30 scalp right there. So these are going to be your support levels. We're going to have a low support at 71.12 with maybe a pivot point area or second support level between the 76, 62, and the 78, 19 area with your first support right here at 81.26 for a strong buy maybe at that support level with a resistance breakout of right here at 8578 and it did hit that 85 80 I mean what did I say 8578 and that's a pretty big spread right there between 8578 and 8650 which is the yearly high on this trade so this is going to be a fun one to keep on watch um, we we've been on this trade for ever since the breakout and that was back on and I'm going to show you something else here on the yearly chart. And I mentioned this back in January, right at the end of December. I said, if you have any stock that you're interested in, you might want to start riding them. And we and Roku was one of them. It did pull back all the way to 26.30 at the when we had that major sell-off on the SPY. And everybody can remember that month. It was the worst December that the market has ever seen. And it was just, and I told the room, and I told everybody that knows me that we're going to have a beautiful 2019 here. And look what's happened. We've ran all the way up. It hit that, that high that we had last year. And this was just a remarkable trade if, if we would have got, if I would have got in it. And I'd been smart enough to, to, and I just started playing the options right back in here. So this would have been a wonderful trade for me to get in at that time because it would have ridiculously went back up to that 2018 high, which is right around that 76 area. And we did break that last week, and that was like a double top. That one time, I bet you it did hesitate on Thursday, and then Friday it ran all the way up to 86.50. So keep this on watch. You're willing to pause this 
uh, video at any time and write down these resistance levels and I'll repeat them one more time just to clear the air here I'm gonna go pit pull up we're gonna have a low support first support here at 8147 I need to get to the uh, 20 day to get a better look low 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 support 7112 I don't think we're gonna see it we can with the pivot point area second support at 7661 to 7824 is going to be your second support area and your first one is going to be right here at 8147 with a resistance breakout of 8578 to 8644 and that's Roku and then this is another trade that we me and one of the ladies in the room were talked about all day KJ we we really were hot on this one here I was calling the low support on it and I was saying it couldn't get no lower than this and it didn't and that was G okay well gene was a machine um gene had good news and um i mean i actually didn't pay attention to the stock at all uh on this day uh because i was just so busy with monitoring the spy and you know during the day when jim and i are together on voice i mean i you know i'm doing multiple things i mean i'm looking at the spy charts i'm working with the options team. she sure is you know so jim is busy with you know wa watching the other stocks too and helping people with charts so we're kind of like all over the place but my goodness gene what a machine okay because on friday um it had a low of um i think the day before thursday it closed at 70 cents right yep and uh, the low of day on Gene was 97, and the high went all the way to 158. And so Gene had news, and the news on Gene was that they, they, they announced that they had a successful completion of two, not one, but two groundbreaking genetic risk tests, one for colorectal cancer and one for breast cancer. I mean, that is just groundbreaking news. So they did talk about the new test pipeline. They talked about what is Gene type for breast cancer and for colorectal cancer. So if you want to know more information, um, I can send you the article, you can read all about it. Um, but the, basically the two new tests for both these illnesses are actually world leading, okay? So the new breast cancer test will provide substantial improvement over what they call the GTG, okay? legacy breast cancer test, which used to be called Breva Gen Plus, um, by incorporating additional clinical risk factors. And so this test will help healthcare providers and their patients with a five-year and lifetime risk assessment of the patient developing breast cancer. So these new risk tests are resulting, uh, it's going to help empower the people that are have increased risk to hopefully reduce, reduce their risk and improve ongoing early future disease detection so i'm not going to get into too much more scientific information because it can be so overwhelming so this news was really strong so i didn't pay attention to the chart actually until i think towards power hour and uh jim was helping someone live on voice about you know exiting the trade and making sure they took profits because you know it did go up make the high of day of 135 and then I started to look at the chart because I was listening to Jim and I said, let me look at this chart. And when I looked at the chart, I said, you know what? This chart's going to have a breakout. And then I looked at the number of shares that it traded that day at that time and the float. And you know what? The float had rotated twice. The stock's got about a little over 16 million shares traded, um, 16 million shares in the float. So uh, it rotated more than thir two times. So two and a half times. So... I said to Jim, you know what? This is a float rotations in play. I mean, the stock's poised to go higher. And that usually will happen when volume precedes price. So, you know what? Um, people did take the trade and the stock did make a new high. And we could see that the stock had a nice run. And uh, it did go all the way up to 158. So actually what happened is people that got out of the trade at 135 went back in. Even I think some of them got back in at 140. And they got out in the 150s. And some people actually swing trading the stock. I mean, look at that volume. 45.8 million shares traded. I mean, that is just crazy. So I'd love to see what happens tomorrow. Keep this on watch for potential continuation. 
And I guess we'll see what happens. And Jim, over to you on the chart. Yeah, this is one of them, one of them plays where you go, wow, you know, it, it, it had a real nice pop in the morning and pulled back to support level, which was right around 98. It did close, like Miss Vegas said, right around 70 cents on on Thursday evening, and then all of a sudden, after hours, it had two big pops, and then pre-market it ran up to a high of right around 123 and then pulled back to 98 cents and then within probably about the first 30 minutes of the day she popped back up and hit that resistance level again and created what I would call a pennant flag. A pennant flag is where you get lower highs and and higher lows and it just kept doing that kept doing it finally squeezed and I was saying you know I don't want to see it go no lower than 107 because if it does, it's going to break that flag, and it could pull back a little more, but we were still bullish on it. And I didn't really, you know, it's good to have Miss Vegas around at times because, you know, sometimes I'm not the sharpest tool in the shed, and I didn't even think about the share rotation part. If I would have put that one element in this trade, I would have been a lot more bullish. When I was bullish on it, but I, I would have increased my bullishness by at least 50% because of the news alone and and them two factors there is enough to bring a trade higher and then all of a sudden man this thing just boomed right from that 107 area that i called i didn't want it to go no lower than that and she ran all the way up to the 150 in 45 minutes and and it that was just i mean each and then i was saying time to get out because we have a lot of new traders in there that have been stuck in a few trades and and I was saying, when you see a big candle like that, go ahead and take your profit. And then Miss Vegas pops in there and says, share rotation. I said, oh, no. I would have said held. Maybe I would have probably said, go ahead and hold this until the end of the day. And then go ahead and take your profit. But what we have working on after hours at that time, when she mentioned it, is a ascending flag pattern where you get a, a neckline of a high of a resistance level at 150, and you get lower highs. And when you see that pattern, so I, I, actually it took, you know, all day to form these two patterns. But now we're seeing where if we break this 150, we can break it up to the new levels of 157. And we got to break that resistance. And I'm going to pull up the one-year chart. And you see we did have a $2 high on this trade. So at that time, when it broke that 150, I was saying the next two resistance levels were at 157, 174, and 204 it's going to be your third hard long resistance so you want to lower that down to that two bucks and that's when people might start taking profit on it so this is how i'm going to call support level on this trade and that was very uh intellectual of miss vegas getting on here and paying attention to that share rotation that was a big key factor of this thing running up more because there are more traders catching on to that concept and let's pull back to the 20 day Let's pull back to the five day. And I'm going to say low support on this trade. We don't want to get any lower than 129, that 130 area. So if you're not in this trade and it decides to pull back, consider that your third support at 129. Consider your first support right here, your second right at 136. And consider 142 to be your first support. 142. With a break of resistance of 157 up to that 174 up to the two dollars and i'm still bullish on this and i think it can run and still have a bullish pattern next week the news was wonderful and so was the trade itself and that's gene and then we got one more that we talk about and i went out yesterday and i tested some of this stuff out i've got starting to run out of my own clone so i'm starting to get some ideas what i want to put on next and it's going to be Avon, AVP. Yeah, so Avon, you know, they're having a quite quite the move there. And so keep a watch on Avon. I mean, it's had a nice. Um, they also did. Um, they also did uh, have their earnings as well on Avon. And uh, I think one of the people on social media he was on cnbc way back and he was you know talking about how he was bullish on the stock and you know there was some chatter out there about natura about having an acquisition of avon a 2.1 billion what they call acquisition loan 
And uh, I don't know. That's just they're saying that that's not true. Um, anyhow, so what they're doing is Avon is taking on some digital transformation with their new app called Avon On, which is for their representatives because they launched, you know, they have those little catalogs, right? Yep. As a matter of fact, my mom showed me a catalog the other day. I'm like, where'd you get that? And she's like, I got it in the lobby. Anyhow, so, um, you know, Avon has had those little catalogs and now they launched a new mobile app to support millions of what you want to call micro entrepreneurs to manage their business on the go. So they're called Avon On. They rolled it out to 17 markets worldwide. They had a very successful trial in the UK. And the launch marks the next step in Avon's digital transformation. They're going to open up access to the brand with high tech and high touch solutions. And their first wave rollout will include Mexico, Russia, and the Philippines. And then they're going to roll out in Europe, Latin America, and Africa. They're going to launch that in July 2019. So what's going to happen with the app is it's going to help the Avon reps increase their productivity faster uh, responses, also social sharing capabilities. Uh, they're going to have instant messaging brochure. They're going to have a social media hub. I mean, I don't know why Avon took so long to come up with an app because the company has been around for so long as well. But at the end of the day, uh, nobody knows why it took them so long, but uh, their vice president of digital development, Nick Burton, he said that Avon has built the world's largest network of female entrepreneurs and they are relentless in their focus to making her successful. And they're saying that by providing the beauty entrepreneurs with a one-stop shop to boost their business from their mobile will be key to unleashing the power of digital for the representatives and increasing the flexibility of the Avon opportunity. So as the app is further developed, they will continue to pilot and launch new functionality to help support the beauty entrepreneurs and to help unlock earning potential. Don't forget, Avon's been around 130 years. This is just incredible. So I would love to have seen that this company would have been, all, you know, the stock would have been worth so much more. But I won't complain because you know what? I talked about Avon even last year. I don't know, for those of you that have been following us on YouTube, you would know. And I talked about this stock. And I did actually say at one time that this is a stock to watch. And I, I recall specifically, I started talking about the stock back in December uh, when the stock had that pullback. And uh, I said, you know what, Avon's one to watch. I think it's one that could have a rebound because uh, they are working on some on enhancing their digital access. And look, back in December, I mean, it was in the 140s, 150s range. And look where it is now. So keep an eye on Avon and uh, we'll see where it goes. Jim, over to you. Yep. Miss Vegas did alert this back when it was down at the dollar thirty. I mean, well, what we really start talking about when it was about dollar forty-three, dollar fifty, and did pull back to that one thirty level would have been a real strong buy. That was already at a double bottom at one forty-three, and let me pull up the chart here. I'm sitting here talking about it, not even. So let me pull up this year. Let me use the. Uh, Uh, pull it together, Jim. There we go. So I'm going to pull up the year's chart. And this is back when I had that big sell-off back in December. You know, this would have been another 100 percenter you could have got in on. Maybe 150 percent gainer. We are created a channel here once it had that initial run from that 130, 143 area. And this is when we start talking about it. Me and Vegas and I have been together trading for over two years now almost every day and we did have a double top breakout of, of that last year at 251 and it did run up to the 241 area so that's a 90 cent bounce it has hit a double almost a triple top at that area and then it pulled back with a lower lower high which is a good sign we do have a trend line that goes up here i'm going to draw that in because that looks important to me right now and that's right down here at the bottom of this wick at 256 all the way up to this wick at 289 and that does run right into that trend line that I had drawn on here at 289 we need to break another support level that I see 
is right here around 305. Now this stock can pull back. It has before. Once it gets up here to this high resistance level at 322. And the resistance we need to break is going to be that 336, which we did have a 341 high up on the wick. I always call them a gift, but I also use them as resistance levels if we do break the base of the candle. So this is how I'm going to write her down. And I'm going to put another little trend line right here for support level. I got a low support at 275. The second support at 289. Your first support is going to be right around here at 305 with the two resistances that we need to break. And we did close at 321 at that first resistance at 322. And we got to break that 336 to, to maybe get out of this channel and start a new channel on the way up. And I'm, I'm, I'm real bullish on this trade. I was a lot more bullish when it was down here at 150, 143. It was just a solid buy due to the fact that that was a low that we had in 2018 which created that resistance level and it did break that resistance at 188 the news started coming in they got a new CEO in this company and I, it just kind of changed everything around the perspective of the trade and it is in a diagonal rectangle channel right now so the low supports again 275 second 289 first 305 with the two resistances that we got to get we hit 322 and the 336 and try to send this into new highs with the new channel and that's the last one that we're going to talk about today and miss vegas will have more to say and get out of her way okay well you know what this is a longer video as you guys know um, again, I welcome you all to come visit us if you don't have time to listen on voice because you have another job. Um, you can, you know, if you're mobile in your car, I mean, you should just tune in and listen and put it. Like Some people told me they drive and they're salespeople and they're on the road and they listen to us on voice like they're like a radio show. I mean, we do talk all day, so nothing wrong with tuning in and uh, no, no risk. I mean, you just try for free and see if you like it. Um, you can also follow us on our Twitter account of I Love Stocks One. Uh, Jim can show you that. If not, go to our website, I Love Stocks dot com, and uh, you can follow us there. And uh, happy to share some ideas in real time. And if you have a Twitter account, obviously it'll beep or vibrate on your phone, so you'll see the alerts that are posted there when possible. We can post there as well. Um, but anyways, have a great Mother's Day. Enjoy your weekend, everyone. And it's been great talking to you all. Thank you for watching. Thank you for subscribing. Appreciate it. And uh, love you all. And see you tomorrow. If you join our room, go to our website. We have a chat room service right here. And that's where you sign up to get into the room. It tells you how to get on Discord. And also tells you the price that, that we charge per month after the two-week trial is up. And also we have a uh, International Women's Day, which is every day to us of the of the year. You're willing to sign up on that. All ladies get a free month off for if they join this this channel right here. So this is I Love Stocks. It's our Sunday's edition. Today's date May the twelfth, two thousand and nineteen, and we love stocks. Thank you.